Hey, hey, any youth leaders out there? Serving with youth in the church is probably one of the most enjoyable callings, but it brings with it a lot of responsibility. How do we effectively lead this rising generation? Well, I have good news for you. Leading Saints has organized the Young Saints Virtual Library, where we have 20 plus hours of presentations all about how to lead youth. We cover topics like how to help youth transition into adulthood, how to help them avoid loneliness, how to handle smartphones in class, and we even go over scientific data about how Latter-day Saint youth differ from other youth. If you'd like to review the Young Saints Library at no cost for 14 days, simply go to leadingsaints.org 14. That's leadingsaints.org 14. While you're at it, we'll give you access to all of our virtual libraries that cover several leadership related topics. So click the link in the show notes or simply visit leadingsaints.org slash one four. Hey, welcome to the Leading Saints podcast. Now, for many of you that are brand new uh, to Leading Saints, it's important that you know that Leading Saints is a nonprofit organization, 501c3, dedicated to helping Latter-day Saints be better prepared to lead. And we do that through content creation. We get so much positive feedback on the podcast, our virtual conferences, the articles on our website. You definitely got to check it out at leadingsaints.org. And on their homepage at leadingsaints.org, you can actually find the top six most downloaded episodes to the podcast. So if you're new, like the content, want to jump in to some of our most popular episodes, head there after you listen to this episode. Michael Albright, welcome to the Leading Saints podcast. Thank you, sir. I'm glad you're here. This, we've uh, recently met, uh, I guess we're recording this in July of 2022, and this past May, we was that the first time we met? Is that the, the men's retreat we both attended? It, it was in person. Uh, you probably get this a lot, but a lot of people uh, listen to you and, and probably get to know you through <laughs> the power right. of the internet, but uh, yeah, our first in-person visit. Nice. Now, uh, many people may recognize, uh, you know, we did an episode called is elders form working where we sort of talked about elders form in general, and then different retreats that I feel like have figured out some ideas and approaches to, uh, serving men and helping them on a spiritual journey. And so how did you end up being at the May, 2022, uh, men's retreat? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll try to be succinct, but it's a little bit of a story. No, that's we fine. Moved- we moved to Texas about two and a half years ago uh, after living in Utah County, uh, Springville specifically for uh, a good dozen years or so. It wasn't until after I moved to Texas that I found all these resources for uh, addiction, specifically uh, pornography addiction. So uh, I stumbled onto the unashamed unafraid podcast Nice. and got, uh, got really interested and, and, uh, really enjoyed the messages being shared there. And that's where the warrior heart Boot Camp surfaced first. I believe Kurt, you've been on there a time or two. And, uh, it turns out that there are a number of people here in the ward, not to drop names, um, but they're involved with also the boot camp. And so through those different touch points, it seemed like something to check out and it was a trip, uh, very much worthwhile making. Nice. And so you'd recommend it to to others to check out and participate. I, in. I would, I, I think, um, you know, you, you had all kinds of folks there, uh, maybe folks who were testing the waters were unsure, uh, folks mm-hmm. who were all in, I think it, uh, there's certainly a level of personal willingness and openness to confront, uh, the issue both in yourself and, and just the world around you. Um, and, and everybody gets out of it what they, what they need to. Uh, there were definitely messages that resonated with me. There were also re- messages that didn't resonate with me. And I, I just chalk it up to a time and a place that just wasn't the yeah. message that I needed at that, at that moment. So what but would you, 
Prevention. So what would you say to someone who said, you know, Michael, listen, we got elder score. I go to church every week. Like, why do I need to consider a third party like retreat men's retreat to attend? What, how would you respond to that? I think, uh, it's a very valid question. In the retreat, we learn about people putting on their, uh, their poser fronts or, or the face and the outward um, persona that they want people to see or experience the narrative that we tell ourselves, the self-deception. I think going to a boot camp like this helps break that down because unfortunately uh, with a culture uh, with church in its current state, and it's not everywhere, but a lot of things don't get talked about or they're glossed over or just kind of maybe dabbled on the surface. Mm. And I think if you're really going to impact meaningful change, you need to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and not to say that there's anything, uh, uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know, boot camp could be you know, uncomfortable in, in terms of, uh, some of the stuff that you're, you're there to confront, whether it's your wounds or you know, just the, the self narratives and the deceit that you've you know been leading yourself into or others. Um, but certainly nothing. I don't know of a lot of elders quorum, uh, Sunday lessons or discussions that go into that uh, kind of content despite, you know, maybe a person's best efforts to be forthcoming and say, Hey, I struggle with addiction. And I invite people to come to maybe the ARP meetings with me during the week, or just, you know, maybe some people are not as, uh, buried in shame as others, but, uh, because of the society we live in that is shame based, uh, in the shame and, and, uh, the culture that we have it in church, unfortunately, uh, I think a lot of strides have been making, uh, or have been made recently, to sort of counter that and to tell people that it's okay, that there are problems and it's okay to talk about them. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a long journey. Um, and so I think, yeah, that's where, that's where boot camp comes in. And then those of us who go, you know, we can carry that message back home and continue to kind of push uh, in, you know, a respectful, polite way, let people know the resources are out there. Uh, yeah. Just continue to kind of let folks know, Hey, there's, there's help out there. And if, if you, if it's something you don't want to talk about or feel good about talking in an elders quorum, consider this. Yeah. As an Love it. So I guess the main focus of our uh, meeting here today, this recording, this interview is you reached out a few weeks ago and shared sort of a unique approach that your ward is taking with, and when it comes to the bishoprics focusing on, on youth and making sure there's a priority there and, and, you know, the bishop, especially the bishop and, you know, there's various interviews that ha need to happen regularly. And, you know, I think the, the bishop doesn't want to miss any moment that it may be youth is reaching out or whatnot. And uh, we've, we've had a lot of talk about this in our, in the weekly newsletter we send out, just how are bishoprics approaching this focus on the youth and what's working, what's not. And uh, you put forward this approach. And so uh, tell us about it. What, what's your word doing and, and how does it involve you? Yeah, when I when we first moved here, it was a uh, pretty boilerplate bishopric and with one executive secretary. I'd say when we first moved, it was it was towards the beginning of COVID, so we didn't have a lot of interaction with the ward members until we were quarantined and, and told to stay home for a good period of time. Um, but last November, so maybe seven, eight months ago, I was invited to... Um, or called as an assistant executive secretary, but specific uh, or designated just for the youth. And so I, I'm guessing discussions were held in, in the bishopric at, at that time that maybe things were slipping through the cracks or just the administrative burden on the one executive secretary. Uh, things just may not have been happening or it was just too much to kind of keep track of or even just time demands. So they, and, and, you can call an executive uh, assistant executive secretary and that can take a lot of different forms and flavors, but they, they chose just to have someone specifically focused on the youth. So uh, what that has, and it's, it's not having a lot of background in church administration before what I've learned is it's a lot of uh, scheduling, uh, working with parents, you know, as, as uh, to coordinate with their, their children and, you know, different comfort levels with, with how household uh, households operate their their time and and scheduling uh, we do have those monthly reports the the bishop bishopric actions and interviews list where the bishop has semi-annual or annual interviews 
Uh, the counselors also have periodic interviews with youth and their quorums based on ages. Uh, YSA interviews, uh, Temple recommends, missionary uh, papers and interviews. So it's really, it's really been interesting to, for the last six months, be involved in, and be very hands-on, uh, trying to be, uh, keep on top of these interviews, make sure that there's a touch point with the youth, that things are going well. And if, if there aren't, uh, if, if things aren't going well, that they're getting the attention that they need and the FaceTime with uh, ward leadership to let them know that, hey, we're interested, we're invested in you and your success, your welfare, your growth. Um, and also, it, it, I think it helps the parents too. It gives, uh, you know, kind of augments the efforts made at home uh, to keep the youth on the straight and narrow. So what's the, uh, the day-to-day week-to-week that like focus? And I, I imagine a lot of this, like you said, is administrative, you're setting up interviews and whatnot. Like, are you trying to, what are some of the main priorities? Like I would imagine one of those is keeping on top of the, 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 you know, regular youth interviews that the bishopric is supposed to have. Yeah. I'll take you just through a normal week. Um, I'll start on, I'll start on Monday. So, uh, if we were say during, during a school year, now that it's summertime, the activities are, are less frequent, but I'll ask the young women's president or presidency, um, you know, what their, what activities they might be having. Certainly with the young men, the counselors or the youth advisors, what the activities are for the deacons or teachers or priests. And then I'll consolidate, you know, their correspondence into one email, get it out to the different presidencies, uh, young women, the bishopric, the uh, secretaries for the different organizations. So they're aware of, you know, maybe what some of their members may have for family activities, but send that out Monday night, let folks know what's going on. Our activities are on Wednesdays. So that's kind of early in the week, kind of setting the stage for what's happening. And then when we get around to uh, the weekend, if it's Sunday or Saturday night, rather, I'll send out reminders if any, if anyone has an interview with a bishop or counselor or the bishop himself, just for, you know, just so that we try to reduce no shows, make, make good use of everyone's time. Uh, and then after church is done and the meetings are over, uh, I'll just look through that, that youth report, see if there are any other interviews, uh, to either follow up back from that maybe we'll miss the last month due to maybe somebody was out of town or just, you know, maybe somebody wasn't available on a Tuesday, but they're available on a couple Sundays. So just kind of scheduling these appointments for either evenings virtually or in person Sunday after church. Uh, look at, look at a temple recommend status list or any youth sort of expiring within the next one to two months, get them in for a renewal, uh, new families move in, make sure that they, have have some face time with the bishop to get to know them that first interview and then kind of get them assimilated into the process. So, uh, it's, it's been good, uh, just to have, uh, myself and the other executive secretary just sort of play, uh, you know, thing one, thing two, Batman, Robin, if you will. Um, and, and we're there for each other. If, if he needs help with uh, an issue with the adults or, uh, scheduling something, I'm happy to help. And I know he's there to help me too. And it's, uh, my, my, my understanding, you know, just receiving feedback is that it's, it's really working and it's moved the needle in a, a really good direction for our ward. And we, we have, I mean, some background, we have a hundred, around a hundred active youth. So this may not be something that every ward needs, uh, just the numbers may not su- support that kind of a calling, but if you've got a big ward and you got a lot of active youth and, um, just might be, might be something to consider might be helpful. Yeah. Now I love this. How it's almost like the Bishop, you know, I don't, I'm sure he didn't use these words, but basically calls you and says, I need you to be the part of my brain. That's always thinking about youth, right? Like you need to know what they're doing this week. You need to know, you know, making sure reminders are happening. Who's up next. And then the Bishop just sort of, you know, follows a schedule, right? Like, Oh, it looks like Wednesday they're doing the thing at the park. You know, I'll, I'll make sure to go to the park and not the church type of thing. Is that a good way to frame it? Yeah, I think so. The the man's, the man's got enough going on that, uh, I think it's helpful for, I think it also by, by way of background, I'm a project manager for my day job. So I I think I'm I'm also (laughs) now a project manager, I guess, to some extent for, for church, but yeah, yeah, I think it's basically just, Hey, tell me where I need to be. You know, who am I meeting with today? What are we meeting about? And so, uh, yeah, I I think at first maybe I struggled a little bit with the concept. Like I really am a bona fide secretary for somebody. And it's just, yeah, 
you, the, the name itself is in the title of the calling, but I, I guess I didn't connect the dots too much. Again, you know, lack of maybe administrative background with how the church functions. But yeah, I think once I got past that point, it was like, okay, I mean, there's a, there's a need here and the man's busy. So just to help him out, lay the groundwork and just execute the plan. Yeah. Now, uh, what, how does the dynamic work? Uh, is there much, I guess, with when it comes to youth needing to set appointments up with the Bishop? I mean, I guess on, in, on paper, they would call you and then, you know, you'd like to the calendar, get them on there. But I think nowadays most people just sort of text the Bishop and, and maybe youth, especially, I, I really don't know, but I would assume that they're texting the Bishop saying, Hey, could we meet type of thing rather than going through this formal process with you. But how, how does how does that process work when youth need to set appointments with the Bishop? Do they always go through you? At this point, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's well known that if the youth needs something, whether the youth reach out to me directly or the parents, um, you, of course you always have folks who may reach out to Bishop. Um, and we've, you know, it's been a good discussion with ward council and, and the bishopric amongst ourselves that, you know, it's, it's okay to, if someone texts you directly, say, thank you for, for reaching out, please contact brother Albright. Mm -hmm. um, but, but by now I've reached out to the parents about their children multiple times, you know, for, uh, meetings or temple rank it, recommend interviews or whatnot that I think now they just know that I'm, I'm the, the point of contact for those things. And, um, definitely, you know, not to, in no way do I want to make it sound like a territorial thing that, you know, I'm, I'm a gatekeeper to Bishop's time. Certainly everyone's approachable, but yeah, just for ease of use and, uh, you know, try to minimize abrasion and mm -hmm. having to touch multiple people. It's been, I think the wards adapted really well and I'm, I'm grateful for their, you know, in a way I, I view that as, you know, they sustain me in that calling and they're willing to work with me and they've, they've been responsive to my outreach and it's, it's worked well, it's worked yeah. well for us. So tell me about that. So there's another executive secretary in the ward and he's just, uh, the old fashioned executive secretary for everybody else, or how does that dynamic work? Yeah. Any, any, uh, any of the kiddos up until, uh, they're, they're baptized. He helps, you know, with those, those items. Uh, once they hit those, you know, that youngest young women's group or deacons quorum, you know, it kind of transitions to me and I just kind of oversee the things they need. So at the beginning of the year, right. The advancements to the, the new classes and the priesthood ordinations, that was, I was a little trial by fire because uh, I'd only been in, you know, seat in the, uh, in the seat for about a month or so before that all started. So that was, that was interesting. Some lessons learned going into the next year that we can maybe do a little differently. Um, but then as soon as, you know, they hit YSA or they've graduated high school and they're kind of transitioning into, you know, what's next in life. The, there's still some overlap, I'd say probably for us uh, between me and brother trainer, but, uh, yeah. Anything kind of before and after youth is a uh, brother trainer during youth was youth years. I'll, I'll kind of take the lead on. Nice. But if, again, if we need help, you know, we're, we're there for each other. Yeah. And is, is there any uh, stickiness when it comes to coordinating calendars, making sure that you're not scheduling an appointment at the same time as him, or is it just a good old Google calendar to make I, that work? Or? He, he is the master of all things, Google brother trainer. <laughs> Uh, Every word got Google, one, the Google as, guy or the yeah, tech guy. As, as right. soon as, uh, he asked, you know, as soon as they let me know that they were wanting me to help in this capacity and, and maybe it's just sort of, you know, project manager one oh one. Okay. How are we going to communicate? Yeah. How are we going to keep stuff? And, and so he's got, he's got all the kind of Google bells and whistles built out. And so we have a shared calendar. Everybody's on it. We have everybody's emails that go straight to their, whatever calendaring system outlook or whatnot. And so we're, we're all on the same sheet of music, same page. And there's no, there's no like hidden calendars being kept. Everybody has the same visibility into what everybody's got on, on one day. Yeah. And, um, are, are you both in most bishopric meetings? Is, is that how that works? Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah. if he's out on vacation, I'll, I'll run the meeting, uh, if it's sacrament planning or uh, ward council and, and vice versa, he's, I mean, he's the primarily the lead anyway. So if I'm out of the office, there's really not, he's not doing anything extra. It's usually just kind of if there's any action items or, or things that come up while one of us is gone, just to make sure that the other is. Made and aware. you're saying if the other executive secretary is out of, out of town, yeah, that you yeah. sort of just step in and, but you're, yeah. you, when you're both in town, you're both in Bishopric meeting yes. and handling whatever issues relate to both your responsibilities, Correct. right? Correct. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. Um, well, uh, and as we do with these, how I lead episodes, uh, I have do, send me two or three leadership principles that have helped you in your, 
in your uh, leadership there as the youth executive secretary. And maybe we've touched on some of these principles, but before we get into that, anything else, as far as just outlining the, this, this calling and your responsibilities that we haven't touched on. You know, it's my first, it's my first time uh, working with youth in the church. I joined the church in my early twenties Hmm. And, you know, right, right away, I, you know, priest, elder, you know, move, moving on and, uh, uh, you know, scouting has since come and gone. So, uh, I, I didn't have that kind of, uh, experiential, uh, learning moment for the, for, you know, as a church youth or, or a traditional mission. And so, yeah, it's just been, it's been really neat to kind of, as my, we have three boys and my, my oldest is 10. Uh, soon to be 11. So he will be rotating into Deacon's quorum very mm-hmm. soon. And so this has been in my, in my mind, you know, kind of a tender mercy from God to uh, kind of bridge that gap in terms of my experience and help me kind of prepare, both prepare and uh, be in a place to learn and experience with my oldest uh, starting next year when he goes to young men's and kind of all of that, that means. So I guess that's popped into my head when you asked that question. Yeah. Uh, well, th- let's jump into these principles. The first one is ownership and stewardship. This has been a recent topic on, on the podcast. So how does ownership and stewardship, how, uh, how does that come up in your, in your leadership life? I guess maybe, uh, maybe being born with an innate sense of responsibility. I kind of always got felt a lot of internal pressure. If someone asked me to help with something that you know, I, I had to do it because someone asked me to, and I didn't want to let somebody down. So kind of in that sense, perhaps I've been asked to help oversee, you know, the welfare and, and the administrative aspects of the youth in our ward. And so I've taken that to heart. And so it's taken again, six or seven months to kind of, and not to say that I've fully figured it out either, but to get to a point where, you know, okay, I know that I need to take care of these actions. This is, you know, this is a, a way that at least I'm receiving positive feedback and things are happening in a good direction. So, you know, kind of finding a process for those monthly interviews, uh, so, you know, such as, and then also now taking on the weekly communication of the activities that's filling a need that had been a pain point that had been expressed. So again, if uh, just keep my ears open, if anybody expresses something for the youth or a need for the youth, whether young women's or young, young men's, just be willing to engage and you know, gather some requirements, find out what exactly needs to be done, what will make the pain go away and see if it's something that I can, you know, build into the routine. But uh, at the moment, it seems to, seems to be working well. And it does, it absolutely takes time, uh, but it's, it's time well invested and spent. And it's, it's, uh, it's not causing too much heartburn in terms of, you know, many, many hours during the week. But um, I think it's, yeah, it's, it's helping the bishopric stay organized people are, are having meetings and I don't want to approach this like a to-do list, you know, absolutely. Every person is a child of God. They're loved. Uh, God's love for them never changes. And, uh, but just to let them know that, you know, we're here for them. There are not to make the gospel a to-do list or a checklist because it's not, uh, but you know, these touch points are built in place as, you know, sort of guardrails just to make sure that the youth are good, that the leaders in the ward can ha- uh, have a relationship because it'd be, it'd be very easy to get pulled in a lot of different directions. So I, you know, it's, it's good to kind of anchor this as it's the focus of, for the young women's presidency, uh, the bishopric is, you know, leading the young men's uh, just to make sure that it's important and it, it, it gets the attention and the focus that it needs. Yeah. Love it. Uh, what about uh, communication is your next principle? And you've touched on a little bit just with working with the other executive secretary and the bishop, you're always communicating, but anything else you'd add to this concept? You know, I, I think, again, maybe more project management 101 in terms of the activities or the events or assignments. It's, it's really driving the, the who, what, where, uh, and when, if you need to, the, the why or the how. But it's, it's surprising. It shouldn't be surprising to me, but you get into these meetings and people have big ideas and they want to do big activities and, you know, not to be a party pooper, but sometimes I'm there maybe just to pump the brakes a little bit and just say, okay, it sounds fun. Or this sounds uh, certainly doable, but we need to make assignments. Who's going to do this? And, and at that point, that's kind of where the rubber meets the road. And sometimes plans change because like, oh yeah, I, you know, that might be bigger than, than we thought, or, you know, we really don't have time. A lot of people don't have time to, you know, make these things happen. So 
uh, making sure that if, if there are activities or assignments made that it's like, pardon me, it's identified, you know, who exactly has ball for that. And then, you know, I play a role of following up to make sure that it actually is happening on, on time. Uh, but going back to the weekly activities, uh, you know, it sounded like it was a little bit of herding cats. Nobody really knew left hand wasn't talking to the right hand. And so it's kind of a simple solution. You just send out one, one email, use the, the church email application to send to the, the parents of the youth, all the right leaders in the ward. And, you know, this is what we're doing. These people meet at this place at this time on this day and so forth. And so I'll just lay it out and, uh, to my knowledge, I haven't received, uh, unless I send out bad information, I'm quick to change it or uh, update it, but it seems, you know, it seems to be helping. Yeah. All right. What about, uh, being respectable and adaptable, uh, as you're working with people and schedules and, and, you know, some people may be more sensitive and how they interact with the Bishop than others. So how do you go about that? Yeah. You know, everybody, um, everybody's just in a different place and it's taken, it's taken me a long time to kind of figure that out maybe longer than it should have, but, but it's, it's been my journey. And I think when I was younger, if, if I felt maybe ignored or if I felt someone had disrespected me, I was, I was quick to maybe get puffed up and, and get defensive. Um, but now it's just, you know, you got to meet people with where they're at and maybe some people feel like you're reaching out to them. Like, Hey, you want my son to meet or my daughter to meet with the bishop yeah, that's, that's kind of like a checklist thing to do. And I'm not into checklists. I'm like, okay, Hmm. you know, I get it. Um, and so rather than, you know, rather than maybe getting defensive, like, Hey, I'm just trying to do my my job here, my calling here. (laughs) It's like, Hey, I I hear you. I'm here for you. Uh, you know, if there's a need, let me know, you know, and I will absolutely, uh, jump into action when the time comes. Um, but again, I, I think, Exceptions like that are, are just that they're exceptions. The vast majority of, of the parents in the ward. And that's been my approach. Um, whether they're the 12 year old or the 18 year old, you know, if I need, if I need to schedule time with them, I absolutely reach out to the parent first. And some you know, part of that communication and respect is how do that, how does that person like to communicate? Maybe they're an email person, maybe they're a text by far and away, mostly text, you know, maybe, maybe I can only really get to these people face to face when I see them in church. Um, you know, just kind of be aware of my audience, tailor my approach uh, to what's going to work best for them. Um, but again, by far and away, uh, everyone has been responsive and, and quick to respond when I need to schedule time or it's recommended that I schedule time. Uh, and if they need to reach out to me, Hey, can I get time with Bishop or, you know, for me or my child? Absolutely. And, and just kind of work with Bishop's calendar to see what we can do. Uh, but again, uh, acknowledging responses when they come through, just being respectful of people's time and effort. Hey, I got your message. I'm a little busy right now. I'll get back to you maybe later tonight, but then actually following through and getting back to them. Um, so I, in, in my mind, it's just kind of one holistic picture. It's, I'm just trying to communicate with people, I guess, the way that I, I would like other people to kind of communicate with me and, uh, just keep them informed, keep them looped in, especially if things aren't coming together, maybe as quickly as they wanted. Hey, you know, I know this is a priority for you. I'm working on it. I, you know, I'll have another update by the end of the day or, or whatnot. But a lot of people are, are, uh, they're very understanding, very, uh, easygoing, easy to work with. Um, and I, th- I think, you know, just kind of that respect, um, acknowledging that I'm asking for time with your child and just sort of taking their lead on how they want that handled. And some parents, you know, by the time they're 18, they're like, you know, Hey, Johnny or Susie, you know, they can schedule their own time. They're old enough now. And at that point, they're <laughs> green light. I can just reach out to Johnny or Susie and say, Hey, you know, when, when are you free? Are you, are you working this week? You know, whatever they're doing in, in their, those latter, latter years in high school and whatnot, getting ready for college and, and things after. Yeah. And, and that's, I love that point because I remember being an executive secretary and then when the tables were turned and I, it was the Bishop with an executive secretary. Sometimes there's moments where, you know, there's a lineup outside there's 10 people who, who just need a few minutes, you know, with the Bishop, I just need a few minutes. <laughs> Is he here? Is he available? Right. And you're th- looking at the schedule thinking, no way. Like there's just not time. Come back. I'll schedule an appointment with me or whatever. Uh, and sometimes even the Bishop will be like, you know, to catch him in the hall. Bishop, do you have a few minutes? He says, sure. Come on in. And you're thinking, Hey, wait a minute, Bishop. Like I sort of have this system here, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> and, it's, it's, and, 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 you say that. Yeah. And, but 
at the end of the day, you just have to be flexible and realize, okay, it looks like we're going to get behind. So I'm going to make two or three phone calls and, you know, maybe tell people to show up a little bit later, or, but that's just, that's naturally going to happen. And it's, it's easy to maybe get flustered or upset, like, man, like this is out of control, but it is, it gets out of control sometimes. Right. I, it, that does happen. Uh, you've, you've brought up an excellent case study, uh, you know, just for the, dr- the drive-bys that sort of derail things. But to your point, I've, I've done exactly that. You know, the next person up, Hey, we're about 15 minutes behind, you know, just go ahead and set up two thirty, show up at two forty-five, and then yeah. just kind of follow things down the, the line and keep people informed as uh, the schedule changes. Yeah. And, you know, again, uh, you know, for example, I had some interviews just this, this, t- this evening. So it's, it's Tuesday night. Uh, but the counselor said, Hey, something's popped up. I can't make it. So if you can just kind of pivot the meetings to Sunday after church. Okay. You know, when I, when I made the the appointments this past Sunday, right. That information wasn't known at the time. So something changed and just, you know, be flexible and it every, you know, everything's worked out now it's Sunday and some people might get flustered by that, but it's just sort of just the way it goes. Yeah. And uh, I remember as a Bishop, I would specifically ask my executive sec- executive secretary to keep me on schedule by knocking on my door, you know, as there's, as my time's up or whatnot, are you a knocker? I've got a, I've got a tap, tap, tap knock. Oh, nice. It's time. Secret code knock. (laughs) I'm due. uh, If if it's at all possible, wrap it up because the next person's sitting outside waiting. Yeah. And I think it does two things. It reminds the Bishop like, Oh yeah, got to keep on task here. And it reminds the person like, Oh yeah, you only have a limited time here. So I, (laughs) and, and they may be dealing with something quite heavy. Right. But it's true. Um, at least it keeps everybody sort of fo- refocus them back on the, the schedule. Yep. So, well, uh, Michael, anything else we, we haven't touched on or concept or tool or app or I don't know, tradition you have in the, in this role as a executive secretary. I don't, I don't think uh, I'm thinking technology wise. I, I'm not a great adopter of, you know, like the Marco Polo or Snapchat or <laughs> Facebook. And I, I'm sure that all the youth use those things. Um, so I, I don't run around with them in those circles. Uh, and, but for better or worse, again, it, to, to do at least what it, I've identified as the needful things for the calling, um, it might certainly help build maybe more of a, a personal relationship with the youth. But I think that's being built, you know, through our interactions as is. That's kind of an interesting question to consider, but I, I don't, I don't really get on those platforms much. Um, but I would say, um, my, my big focus is, uh, for example, this past Sunday, they were talking about, uh, Oh, it shows, shows you how much I've been keeping up with the come follow me. Was it, is it Neiman and the, the river Jordan? I get the Neiman. I think so. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is me pretending. I'm, yes. I'm, uh-huh. I'm getting called out by <laughs> church population here. Um, but you know, as we were talking about that story and just, you know, pride and humility and, and whatnot, I, I felt really impressed. Uh, this may or may not have a lot to do with that week's lesson, but you know, maybe more so about the beginning topic of the, uh, the boot camp and stuff, but it was, you know, during boot camp, there's that, that clip, I think by Graham cook called the inheritance. Yeah. And he's not, he's not a member of our faith, but it, it's just such a powerful message that God loves you because he's love. He loves you because he's perfect love. He doesn't know how to be any other way. Um, but, and he's not going to love you more. If you make a good decision, he's not going to love you less if you make a bad decision. Uh, but what does change is your ability to feel his love. And, you know, the choices that we make, if, if we're doing something that's not quite right, it's going to put a barrier you know, some interference between us and in that love that, you know, God has sent in our way. And that was, that's really the message that I just try to imprint uh, on these young men that I meet with, or, or just, you know, if I happen to, to be in a, a young women's meeting, um, I'm really, I really just want to focus on, you know, God loves you 100% all the way, all the time. Um, but if you're not feeling it, you know, that's what president Nelson has asked us to do is just repent daily. Just say, I'm sorry if you've made a mistake and be honest about it. Don't hide in shame. Don't try to keep to yourself and just wish it away. Um, but just, you know, deal with it, deal with it quickly, get it out of the way and get back on track. And so I, you know, just being a young man, not in the church, having joined the church and struggled, you know, with pornography addiction since, you know, easily 10 or 11 years old, you know, just those formative years growing up, which are so, so, so buried in shame. And, uh, you know, to hear that kind of a message when you're much younger, 
um, I'm, I'm almost positive, you know, there are youth who have struggles. Uh, and so if I can, if I can provide a positive touch point to help reorient their thinking, because it's so easy to get down on yourself or think that I'm not loved, you know, God doesn't approve of me. I'm not worthy. And, you know, it's, you gotta, you gotta reorient that thinking and, and let them know what the real, the real truth out there is. Love it. Uh, let's see. I think we covered everything here. Um, well, the last question I have for you, Michael, is as you reflect on your time as a leader, as the executive secretary, uh, what, uh, um, how has being a leader helped you become a better follower of Jesus Christ? What came to mind when you asked that is, you know, leadership takes a lot of different forms. And so a lot of people maybe think of a leader as the, the top of the triangle, top of the pyramid, the, uh, the top down direction, you know, someone gives vision or guidance or, or direction and people, you know, go and execute that plan. Um, leadership is also very much horizontal in um, trying to influence, you know, a peer set uh, or, or even manage up. Um, so, you know, leadership can, can be sideways, it can be up, it can be down, it can be in any direction. And I think, uh, you know, keeping that in mind, if I were to liken it unto you know, how the Savior teaches us servant leadership that too takes all kinds of different um, approaches, depending again on your audience. I, you know, as we were talking earlier, I talked about or mentioned meeting people where they're at on their journey. And, you know, not every nail needs a hammer and not every scenario needs the same approach and just being adaptable, um, meeting people where they're at. And, you know, I think that's kind of that's what I would relate it to. That, that's what kind of what this experience has taught me over the last six or seven months. And that concludes this How I Lead interview. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I would ask you, could you take a minute and drop this link in an email, on social media, in a text, wherever it makes the most sense and share it with somebody who could relate to this this experience. And this is how we how we develop as leaders, just hearing what the other guy's doing, trying some things out, testing, adjusting for your area. And uh, that's that's where great leadership's discovered, right? So we would love to have you uh, share this with uh, somebody in this calling or a related calling, and that would be great. And also, if you know somebody, uh, any type of leader, who would be a fantastic guest on the How I Lead segment, uh, reach out to us. Go to leadingsaints.org slash contact. Maybe send this in individual an email letting them know that you're going to be suggesting their name for this interview. We'll reach out to them and uh, see if we can line them up. So again, go to leadingsaints.org slash contact. And there you can submit all the information and let us know. And maybe they will be on a future How I Lead segment on the Leading Saints podcast. And remember, go to leadingsaints.org slash 14 to access our full Young Saints virtual library. It came as a result of the position of leadership which was imposed upon us by the God of heaven who brought forth a restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when the declaration was made concerning the own and only true and living church upon the face of the earth, we were immediately put in a position of loneliness. The loneliness of leadership from which we cannot shrink nor run away, and to which we must face up with boldness and courage and ability.